Hello, welcome everybody. This is Daikon Dave with the Food Literacy Center and today we are making a pot of beans. I have three examples of dried beans for you today. In our first bowl here, I have dried garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans, what are we using for like hummus and Indian curries and all kinds of tasty things. Um, in the second bowl, I have a bean that's called Zuni Gold Beans. We got these from the food bank and you cook those up, they're real creamy and delicious too. And in this third bowl, what we're making today is red kidney beans. So why don't we get started and say, well, why are we using dried beans today? Well, lately I've been going to the grocery store and it's really tough sometimes to find canned beans in the can. So, but they have a lot of dried beans on the, on the shelves. Um, they also actually cost like half as much too. The beans we're using today probably cost $2. And if you use the canned beans, it'll probably cost twice that much. And it's a great way to control how much salt we have. There's no salt in dried beans where they're, they like to add salt to canned beans. Um, so it's a way to control the amount of salt that we have. So that being said, why don't we start getting, let's get started with our recipe. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your dried beans out the night before. You're going to want to soak these in water the night before, but before you soak them, you're going to want to go through some of these dried beans and you're going to find some sticks and twigs, maybe some debris in here that you're going to want to pull out because you're not going to want to eat those. And I think we got all our beans cleared out here. I found some twi twigs in there. And then you're, what you're going to do is just cover those beans with plenty of water. Because they're going to expand almost two to three times the size. So this is the bowl of two cups of dried beans. And after I soaked them overnight, this is our bowl of beans here. And see how they got way bigger? They're like two or three times the size. So once those soak overnight, we are ready to start our recipe. Now, if you don't, if you forget to soak your beans overnight, there's a quick way you could do that, where if you bring a, a, a pot of water up to a boil and you pour your dried beans in there, let them cook for a minute, and then shut that off and let them sit for an hour, and those will tenderize those beans up if you forgot to do it overnight. But I think it's a lot easier just to do it overnight. So you're ready to go the next day to make your dried beans. And let's get started. So, we're gonna get our ingredients together beforehand. I've already chopped some carrot up here in some one inch strips. Here, I might cut down a little with a tunnel. Maybe cut those down a little more. Now, why do you think it's important that we chop all our ingredients the same size? We chop all ingredients the same size so they cook the same. So, do you think that things cook faster if they're chopped bigger or chopped smaller right they're chopped smaller they cook uh, faster than if they're chopped bigger but if you cut them all the same they cook at all the same uh, the same time and now we're going to chop some onion up for that and for that we're going to use our chopper right this is a great tool for the kiddos to chop onions because we know that onions can get a little fumey and get the the waterworks going. So why don't we use our chopper? We're gonna chop our garlic. We'll drop our garlic in there. And using our claw, we're gonna chop some onion up in here and stick some onion up in the chopper. Plus it's super fun to use, right? And the kids could chop it up. So let's see how this goes. Let's... Maybe get them to count with you. Two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's see how we did. Whoa. Chop that up really fine. So we got our onion here and our garlic chopped up. We got our carrots and our celery. And now I think we're ready to go. We have all this together. And actually, carrots, celery, and onion are a real classic combination. They call mirepoix. Can you say that? Mirepoix. And that we're going to use that. They use that in actually a lot of classic sauces, uh, soups, stews, things like that. You're going to see that a lot. So, why don't we get started cooking? So, we're going to heat our pan up here with some olive oil. Glug, glug, glug. 
a couple teaspoons of olive oil in there. And once we get that nice and hot, we are going to stick our veg in there. Funny thing about these uh, flexible cutting boards, you just stick it in there. And we're gonna start sauteing that up until it gets nice and toasty, soft and translucent, and get those going. And while those are going, and they're almost ready, all we're gonna do is take our soaked beans and dump them in there. Dump those beans in there, give it a stir. And then we're just gonna cover them with water. About two inches above, make sure they don't burn. Maybe give it another quick stir. And as that's coming up to boil, we got some bay leaves. We're gonna stick two bay leaves in there. Oh, we got our two bay leaves. Stir those in, cover them up and bring them to a simmer. Now simmer, is just below boiling point. So we might bring it up to a boil, then turn the heat down until just bubbles are forming on there. And you're gonna simmer them for half hour, 40 minutes, and then you're gonna check the beans to make sure to see if they're done or not. If they're not done, they may have to go another five, 10 minutes. But once those are done, we are gonna add a teaspoon of cumin Oh, give that a smell. The cumin is one of my favorite spices. And we got our teaspoon out. We're going to add a teaspoon of cumin. That's a great thing about this recipe is it's really simple. The kiddos can help you make it at home. It fills your house up with amazing smells. And you can add other things in there as well. Um, I'd like to add chili and adobo in there. Comes in a can. Gives it a nice smoky flavor. If you like some jalapeno, other fruits and vegetables in there, maybe some fresh corn. And once we simmer that for a while and the beans get tender, we will end up with something like this. Nice and toasty and brown and warm. And when those are nice and tender, we're gonna give them a taste. So I'm going to grab my ladle here, spoon a little bit out, and we're going to give it a try. <laughs> Those are so good. It's a great source of protein and fiber. Remember fiber is this broom that sweeps all the bad stuff out of our body. And what this would also go really good with, if you have any of the leftover tostada, veggie tostadas that we made earlier this week, it would go excellent with a veggie tostada. So if you have any of those leftovers, that would be really, really good. Um, so that's it. Dried beans. Easy peasy. Go ahead, soak some beans. Um, feel free to share any of your videos, pictures, or stories at, food, at our Facebook page. And you could go to foodliteracycenter.org for previous lessons, um, activities, and future lessons and activities. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.